Um, Boost CV 0.32 has just been released. But I'm going to talk about all the new features that have been added to Boost CV um, since um, version 0.29, which is about last year. Uh, one of the things you can do now that you couldn't before is download pre-built jars, uh, demonstrations, and examples. Um, now you don't need to build a library more. You can just download it if you want to try things out. Um, applications also have a fully flushed out um, GUI, which enables you to do most of the stuff that you can through the command line. For example, if you want to launch the QR code um, generator, this window opens up and uh, you can now create your own QR codes that are compliant. I'm kind of surprised how many of the QR code um, line are non-compliant really bizarre ways, like having the bits flipped and stuff like that. I've talked about this in previous video, so I'm not going to go over it again. Now I'm going to launch the demonstrations jar. The demonstrations jar actually includes examples and demonstrations. Um, I've gone over this before, but examples are designed so that the code is readable and you can learn from it. Demonstrations, the code is much more complex and more of a focus on um, GUI and visualization. Uh, and often I will use the demonstrations for debugging. Uh, one of the new features in this release is that uh, you can actually see the source code. For example, let's look at bundle adjustment, which I'll talk about later. I launch it. Right now I'm looking at the command line output. This actually takes a couple of minutes to run because it's doing a whole bunch of math. But I can look at the source code, and now it's been colorized. Before it was just black and white. And um, as before, you can click on GitHub, have GitHub load, you get the idea. I've just launched the demonstrations jar again, and now I'm going to open the demonstrations application. From here, I'm going to open up a multi-view um, reconstruction demo. Well, it's really just the first part of it. Uh, many of the new features that have been added to Booth CV have been for multi-view reconstruction. But uh, the current work in progress looks pretty cool. What you're seeing right here is the three-view stereo application demo. What it'll do is take three uncalibrated images and compute the point cloud that you see right here. Um, this is just like a scene out of nature that I took somewhere in California of a rock that was up close and uh, with some distant hills. And uh, I had to go through a lot of processing steps. Actually, many of the new features that have been added to Boost CV um, have been for um, doing this sort of problem. So the full thing is multi view reconstruction. And in that, you take like a series, let's say like 100 or 300 images, and compute the 3D structure from all the points inside. This is kind of like the first step um, that you do to maybe like a few of the images inside of it. There's a lot involved. Um, for example, um, I compute stereo matches between um, each of the in images, and then I compute um, a three way match using a trifocal tensor. The code that was in Boof CV before for trifocal tensors wasn't that great, um, but it's uh, a lot better, more stable now. And then you have to rectify the images, but to rectify the images, you need a very precise stereo um, uh, estimate. And to get that, um, you had to go through and do um, projective reconstruction, and then metric reconstruction, bundle adjustment, auto calibration. Each of these is like individual field with lots of papers involved. Um, so it's actually a fairly complex process, and um, it's not actually very terribly stable equations. But uh, I got this working pretty well. Um, it doesn't, it works, for three views, it works very well. Um, sometimes uh, you can see that, uh, like, the focal length would be a little bit off. Like, these cats from a museum um, aren't actually that stretched out. But uh, it does a pretty good job overall, I think, for, like, a first attempt. And... I'm now actively developing the scenario for like 100 images and not just using three. Next up is bundle adjustment. I mentioned um, bundle adjustment a minute ago, but it's a um, very important new feature. And uh, I'm going to have to open up the examples for that. Go to structure for motion, click on bundle adjustment. Now, what sparse bundle adjustment does is take an initial guess of a point cloud. So it's like 3D points, camera positions, lens distortion, intrinsic parameters, all that, and optimizes it to minimize the reprojection error. This is actually a fairly complex process, um, and um, not having um, bundle adjustment in Boof CV, at least in a usable form, um, 
held it back quite a bit. Now that it's in there, um, a lot of things become possible. What you're seeing printed out here is um, each iteration in uh, Leavenberg Marquardt. Um, so there's like the cost function fx, how much the cost changed. So you can see it in the first iteration, it decreased it by um, a factor of 100 about. Um, and then as well, there's stuff dealing with like uh, convergence and all that. This will take like a minute to run. But uh, when it's done, you'll have a uh, much better reconstruction, which you can then use to compute um, the dense stereo that I showed you in the previous example. So we're going to jump ahead in time now. So after 2 minutes and 28 seconds, it's reduced to air by 7,000%. And uh, you see this point cloud. Uh, this is taken from a data set uh, that's popular among um, bundle adjustment algorithms and is used in papers quite a bit. I believe it was bundle adjustment at large. Hopefully I'm not wrong, otherwise I'm sure I'll be getting some messages telling me I'm an idiot. But um, So I've compared the implementation of BooCV versus um, other fairly popular packages like Series Solver, which is an excellent um, nonlinear optimization library made by a guy at Google. Um, and it's quite popular in this field. Um, the one in Boost CV actually appears to be comparable in speed to all these like natively written one. And um, another person I know compared a sparse optimization library um, that I used uh, EJML against um, some C++ ones. And uh, it had comparable performance. Now keep in mind, a dense library's Java doesn't fare nearly as well. Typically C++, that if it's well written, will be about three times faster. Well, I did find it interesting when I was comparing um, the, like Serious Solver and other libraries against each other is how sensitive they were. Like a minor change in a parameter could change the computation time on a data set from 2 minutes to 10 minutes. It was very unstable. Um, that also is making me doubt a lot of the performance claims in papers because no one really mentioned how unstable it was and it's very easy to cherry pick. But um, enough on that. Now. One of the new features in BoofCV is this like fancy point cloud viewer you're seeing. Uh, I've been wanting for a long time to have a better point cloud viewer. It took, um, I had a bounty that pretty much went ignored. I think someone offered to do it for $500. Um, I tried JavaFX and I ended up just like rolling my own 3D rendering engine that you're seeing here. This actually works pretty well. Um, and because I wrote the 3D engineering engine, it was easy to add stuff like fog to it, which is why you can see stuff kind of like fading away as it get the background, which is kind of cool, especially when you don't have uh, textured images like you do in this data set. Another new feature in BoofCV is the addition of a faster external only uh, contour detector. And um, that's the blue lines you see here is the contour of binary images. And the way it was made faster is it was the code was redesigned so that Sims instructions could be used. In Java, you can't explicitly tell it to use Sims instructions, but um, if you put your code and make it easy enough, the Java virtual machine might realize that it can optimize stuff using Sims and uh, go faster. And that's what happened here. And um, the improvement is about 30% to 10 times faster depending on the image. One of the new features um, added to BoofCV is the Gaussian Mixture Model Background uh, Motion Detector. So what you're seeing right now is a basic one. And the camera's moving around a little bit, and around the edges of the objects you get these like false passes, pa uh, positives flashing all the time. Now with the Gaussian Mixture Model, it has a possibility to learn um, kind of like the models around the edges. And well, in general, but not always, um, reduce the amount of like noise you get. A new feature in BoofCV is support for the Camera 2 API. However, since I can't show you the Camera 2 API, I'm going through a point cloud right from Minecraft. Um, Android support was pretty much rewritten for the Camera 2 API. Um, there's a bunch of performance improvements, more flexibility, it's easier to change camera settings, and um, I think, yeah, it's a pretty big improvement over what was there before, plus support for Camera 2, which is a much better API than Camera 1. So you should check that out. Um, you can download the demo through the Android Play Store. Just search for BoofCV and demo and you'll find it. So that's it for now. Um, thanks for watching this video.